Well, it's good to be here by the grace of God. I've been traveling. Um, two weeks ago, I got to be up. At, I'm going to introduce a young man here in a minute. But two weeks ago, I was up in Wichita, and they got me into the maximum security prison. And uh, we were able to preach and break our boards and bricks. They, they wouldn't let me bring my bed and nails in there, though. But uh, anyway, make a long story short, we had 23 men get saved by the grace of God. Amen. Thank you, little Justin, if you don't mind. By the way, let's give this brother a hand. He's been with all his equipment and recording. And, 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 and. It didn't work. <laughs> he told me to turn it, bro. Okay, so anyway, so we had 23 saved by the grace of God. And here's the miracle. See how bad y'all want to hear this, okay? Here's. We were people. Amen. That's right. Come on. Don't go to work, bro. <laughs> okay, so I think it's better. I was, okay, so what? Okay. Is that it, baby? Okay, so what happened? What happened was only by the grace of God, the chaplain and the uh, warden uh, spoke to me and said, We've never seen our inmates respond like this to a preacher. And they said, the way you were preaching and, and breaking stuff and then preaching and breaking stuff. And so they said, if you could get us a DVD of your preaching, which you breaking all that stuff, we believe every man in this facility needs to be exposed to your message. We'll pipe it and stream it through the whole entire system. Right. Come on now. Praise God. Praise God. And so uh, I happen to have a DVD. <laughs> I'm not bashful, as you can tell. And then, um, uh, unfortunately, we had some death in the family, and while I was there, um, my uh, brother allowed me to speak for his church Sunday morning. They had a 7.45 a.m. service, and only God could do this. We had 43 people saved by the grace of God, 7.45 service. And, uh, and anyway, so then we preached 11 o'clock service and spoke I gave an invitation. We had people come up forward praying for their breakthrough. And they stayed on the altar for about a half hour, though, about 90% of the church. Wow. And I was like, no, y'all can go sit down now. They, I was like, hey, Pastor, I'm trying to get them to sit down. They, want, they, they refused to sit. They want to pray. So anyway, they invited us back. So Amen. we got a young man today. My, my youngest is named Jonathan over here. By the way, on the way down here, I told him, I said, you know, there's a scripture says there's a man sent from God whose name was John. And when he was a baby, uh, when, he, well, when he was in his mother's womb, uh, it was prophesied that he would be a prophet and that God would anoint him. And so, anyway, he's just been an unusual guy and just a blessing. And so he said to me, are you going to Smokey John's today? I said, yes, sir. So he said, what, you, you think I can say a word? I said, well, if he asks me to speak, I'll bring you up there. I said, but if not, I'll raise my hand and say, hey, I think there's a young man want to say something. So um, at our one-year millionaire live event that I spoke at here in Dallas this weekend, I brought him up and had him uh, say a little bit. He, he wrote a book, he'll tell you about it. Because uh, in our household, you're not allowed to ask for money. In my household, you ain't allowed to ask me for money. You're gonna ask me for a job. You're gonna ask me if I had something to do where you can make some money. But you ain't getting no money by asking for it, amen. So he, he decided to write a book and he works on different businesses. And that's what he does. So anyway, Jonathan Christian is his name. Could y'all give this young man a hand? Come on, give him a little more energy than that. Come on. Come on, give him a little more energy than that. Come on, give him a little more energy than that. Come on, give him a little more energy than that. Now remember, they didn't call on him. He asked. <laughs> so he asked and he's receiving. So here you go, John. Yeah, 
Can you guys say breakthrough time? Breakthrough time. Break it on down. Breakthrough time. Breakthrough time. One more time. Breakthrough time. Breakthrough time. Seriously, if you'd like to get one, uh, he won't mind, because uh, he ain't getting no money from me. But how to do it, unless he does some work, amen? And uh, he's a good hard worker, by the way, also. A very respectful young man. And if you don't mind, uh, Smokey, could you maybe just, uh, by the way, I don't know if you remember, we had the prophet here a couple weeks ago, uh, Dr. Mawari. Robert Mawari. Robert Mawari. And uh, so while I was preaching, I said, God, uh, this man's really a prophet. When he's done, let him come over here and pray for Jonathan. And when he was done, there was a man that was there praying with him. Soon, he went right over B line to where we were, and I was like, "Uh oh." <laughs> and uh, he prayed for Jonathan. As a matter of fact, he prayed for me too. But uh, so, praise God for that. So, all right, Smokey. Go ahead. Oh, man, please. Okay. <laughs> all righty, all righty. How many are glad you're saved by the grace of God? Amen. Amen. Okay, that sounded like Presbyterians. Let me try it again. How many y'all glad y'all saved by the grace of God? Amen. 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 Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, is what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. So ask me how I'm doing. Amen. Man, I'm too blessed to be depressed, too blessed to be stressed, too glad to be sad, too anointed to be disappointed, too elated to be agitated. I'm too legit to quit. I'm too grounded to be confounded. I'm too grateful to be hateful. And I'm too saved not to be getting paid. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. <laughs> so if you have your Bible, turn anywhere because it's all good. Amen. Oh, come on now. Amen. But I'm going to Mark chapter 9 real quick. Mark chapter number 9 in God's holy word. And again, thank you very much, Smokey, uh, 
for allowing Jonathan to get a few words in there. And uh, amen. I said, I told people I'm the world's first breakthrough speaker, and he said he's the world's second breakthrough speaker. So, amen. By the way, what's a breakthrough? A breakthrough is exploding through barriers that at one time seemed insurmountable. So, Mark chapter 9, verse 29. And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and Help me out again. This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So I think I spoke on this before, uh, this topic, a uh, different, different type of message though. And that is, if you want a this kind of breakthrough. A this kind of breakthrough. So, you know the story where Jesus was called because a man had a son that the demons literally were trying to destroy him. The dad couldn't do anything. But thank God he didn't give up. So he went to the disciples. They couldn't do anything. But thank God he didn't give up. See, somebody said when things go wrong as they sometimes will, and the road you're trudging seems all appeal. When the funds are low and the debts are high, you want to smile, but you have to sigh. If care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is strange with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a struggle turns about. When they might have won had they stuck it out. Don't give up though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Success is failure turned inside out. The silver tint of the cloud of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. Victory may be near though it seems afar. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse that you just mustn't quit. And by the grace of God we've got to get some saints. Come on somebody. that got some stick to it. -ness. Hello somebody. I mean, we got, see, our problem is we got too many whiners. I know somebody, but I'm looking for some winners and some warriors by the grace of God. And this man said, listen, I couldn't do anything. The disciples couldn't do anything, but I'm not stopping. Let me go and find the one who's the deliverer. Come on, somebody. And so Jesus, of course, touched this little boy. And if you read the story, when he touched the boy, guess what? The boy fell down as if he was dead. You know what that shows us, my friend? That oftentimes, before you get your undeniable wow. breakthrough, wow. you first will have an overwhelming breakdown. Yes, Lord. Hello, somebody. I said, before you get your undeniable breakthrough, you oftentimes have an overwhelming breakdown. Unless a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. Now, it's about to have a breakthrough, but first it got to break down. Hey man, I like you, man. I'm taking you with me everywhere I go. <laughs> Come on, somebody. See, see, the church doesn't want to hear this. The church doesn't understand this. But the reason why most folk will never get a breakthrough is because you're not willing to be broken down. He will break you down, my friend. I'll never forget. I was going through a hard time in my life, and and uh, I back then I, I, I didn't have the wisdom I needed, and I was traveling 320 days a year. I thought I was going to save the world overnight by myself, and it didn't work. Living off three hours sleep a night. See, I had a bad. Number one, I was a preacher. I heard preachers were lazy. Number two, I'm a black man. I heard black men were lazy. And I happened to be a black preacher. Hello, somebody. <laughs> or a preacher who's black. Any way you call it, I had it both. Hello. So I said, I got to prove I'm not lazy, right? So, man, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not turning down any meetings. I'm doing everything. 320 days a year. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I, don't, I, I wasn't just preaching. I also do my martial arts demonstrations. So you can imagine breaking boards. You can imagine stacking up 22 inches of bricks and breaking them. You can imagine laying on a bed of nails and putting 200 pounds of bricks on my stomach. And a guy takes a 20-pound sledgehammer and breaks the bricks off my stomach. And see, then when you jump up and preach, they listen real well. Come on, somebody. But, but anyway, what I'm saying, so it's not just pouring out the preaching. It's pouring out with the physical demonstration. And sometimes I would do four and five demonstrations a day. They'd get me in the right. school at 8 o'clock in the morning, and then another one at 10, and another one at 12, and another one at 1, and uh, at 1.30, whatever. And then I go to church and preach that night. You see what I'm saying? And, and, but, but I love it, though. I just love God. and I love. But to some degree, when you're trying to prove something, you're not really serving God. You're not hearing the voice of God. Come on, somebody. And so, so, so I collapsed. But what I'm saying is this, my friend. A preacher, an older preacher called me. He said, young man. He said, and by the way, as an evangelist, um, again, I preached in all 50 states, 28 countries. And when I was down, there was only one person that came to visit me. Come on. Come on, preacher. 
Okay, let's see it again. I said I preached in all 50 states, 28 countries. Come on now. I'm preaching for preaching folks' funerals. Hello, somebody. I'm visiting in the hospitals. I'm going to the jails. I've preached on the street corners. You name it, I preach there. I'll stop basketball games and preach. I've gone to laundry mats and preach. You name it, I preach there. I even preached on the airplane one time coming from Israel. Hello, somebody. I got so overcome. I told my wife, I, 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 it's about to come on. She said, what? I said, I can't help it. She said, you can't help what? I said, watch this. I jumped up, got him out there and started preaching and somebody like Smokey was there because the guy in the back said amen. Now, you don't say amen to a preacher preacher when he preaching unless you want him to preach some more. Come on now. Amen. And on that 747, I preached the gospel 33,000 feet in there. What I'm trying to tell you is this. When I was down, my friend, and watch this, my friend, and uh, there was one old preacher and he didn't come by, but he called and he said, young man, you'll make it through this. I said, sir, I wish I could believe that, but have you ever heard that there's uh, light at the end of the tunnel? He said, yes, sir. I said, there's no light. There's no tunnel. <laughs> He said, young man, I'm a country boy. He said, I'm going to tell you something. You're like, here's what God's doing. He said, right now you're cracked open. It's like a double barrel shotgun. He said, God, sometimes, if he loads you up, he first has to crack you open. He said, he's about to load you up. And here's what he said. You might not have the faith to believe you can get through this, but I believe for you. So just have faith and my faith in you, everything's going to be okay. And sure enough, 20 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> but guess what, my friend? God was loading me up. And I'm saying, listen, this man didn't understand something, my friend. But see, God was setting him up for an incredible breakthrough. As a matter of fact, he was setting the disciples up to have future breakthroughs. But oftentimes, you got to have a breakdown. Psalm 66, 12, thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. Watch this. It didn't say the devil. It said thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. Sometimes, God will allow people with less talent, less ability, less time than you to get elevated up above you, watch this now, so you can have an attitude check. Hello, somebody. Hello. See, want to see what kind of attitude you got. See, Zig used to always say that you got to have a checkup from the neck up. Folks suffering from hardening of the attitude. They got stinking thinking. Come on now. But the Bible says, rejoice with those that do rejoice and weep with those that weep. Can you rejoice when other people get above you and you think you should be there? So Psalm 66, 12, you're about to have a breakthrough. Watch this. But before you have your breakthrough, you got to have a breakdown. Come on, somebody. So thou has caused men to ride over our heads. Not the devil. Thou has caused men to ride over our heads. Watch this. We went through fire. I mean, if this, that wasn't enough, we, first of all, God, you put other folk over us. You passed over me. You, you like forgot about me. You let me down here when I should be up there. And now I'm going through the fire. Anybody in here ever going through some fire? Anybody might be going through some fire right now? Come on, somebody. I got news for you. It ain't the devil. Thou has caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire. Who do you think let them go through the fire? Come on, somebody. See, he allowed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to go through the fire because he knew he was going to be in there with them. Come on, somebody. And lo, I am with you always. See, our problem is we're some more aware of our problems than we are the presence of God. Come on now. And this is the problem the disciples are going to have. See, listen, that's why Jesus said this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. See, you've been focusing on how bad that devil is working on that boy instead of focusing on how powerful my principles are. Come on now. And so watch this, my friend. So thou hast caused men to ride over our heads, Psalm 66, 12. We went through fire. We about to be burnt up. And now you get out of there and you think it's okay. Oh, no, we ain't done yet. Now you got to go through the water. You're about to be drowned. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Y'all heard this story, right? The brother said, I want to be successful. His mentor said, do you really want to be successful? He said, no, I really want to be successful. He said, good. Meet me down at the beach early in the morning. He said, what? what? Just meet me down at the beach early in the morning. He came he said, okay, come on. Took him down in the water. He said, okay, come over here. Come look close. He said, okay. He grabbed him and put him down. Boy, like trying to get up. Holding his head down, he's trying to get up. Holding his head down, he's trying to get And then, boy, I mean, listen, almost a minute goes by. And finally, Mitchell lets go, boy. Uh, 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 oh, my goodness. You almost killed me. What did you do that for? He said, I'm going to tell you something. When you want to succeed as much as you want to breathe, you will succeed. Come on, man. And sometimes God allows us.
us. And sometimes, listen, my friend, we're in the water. We're like, Lord, I'm about to drown. I can't. He said, listen, when you want me as much as you want to breathe, come on, somebody, you'll get it. See, you'll find me when you seek for me with all your heart. And so he said, listen, this kind of breakthrough only comes through fasting and prayer. And listen, my friend, not just a regular prayer. I'm talking about the prayer of faith. Come on, somebody. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Come on now. Elias, or Elijah was a man subject unto like passions as we are, but he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained out on the earth for a space of three and a half years. Watch this, my friend. The only difference between Elijah and you, he was subject to like passions, but he prayed. He didn't let his like passion stop him from praying. Come on now. He didn't let his heart stop him from praying. You ever fallen asleep while you was praying? And guess what, my friend? The devil said, you don't need to pray. You fallen asleep on God like that. You know what the Bible says? If our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart. See, the problem is, instead of listening to the world, instead of listening to the Satan trying to enter into our minds, we got to listen to the promises of God. Come on now. And that's when the disciples said, Lord, why could we heal this man? He said, this this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. But if what's going to make you pray, I'll tell you what's going to make you pray, and that is sometimes you got to be in agony. The Bible says that being in the agony, he prayed more fervently. Wait a minute. This is talking about Jesus. This is talking about the King of Kings. Listen, if he, get this now, if he prayed more fervently when he was in agony, why do we think we don't have to go through some agony? Come on now. I'm not saying you got to live in agony, but you're going to have to go through some agony. See, pain and adversity causes some men and women to break, but by the grace of God, it causes others to break records. God's looking to make some folks some record breakers. But see, here's what you don't know. Behind the glory, there's always a story. And the story is often gory. Hello, somebody. I said, behind the glory, there's often a story, but the story is a gory story. Come on, somebody. If you, the people you look up to the most, if you knew what they've been through, come on, somebody, come on. you wouldn't be so, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's right. But we got to get down to prayer. I mean, real prayer. Yeah, yeah. Early you left your room this morning, did you think to pray? In the come name on. of Christ our Savior, did you sue for loving favor as a shield today? Oh, how pray, rest the weary prayer can change the night today. So when life seems dark and dreary, don't forget to pray. One man said, I met God in the morning where the day was at his best. His presence came like glory, like a sunrise on my breast. All day long his presence lingered. All day long he sailed with me. We sailed with perfect calmness over many troubled sea. Other ships were torn and battered. Other ships were sore distressed. But the winds that seemed to drive them, Brad, bought to me a peace and rest. And then I thought of other mornings with a keen remorse of mine, when I too had loosed the moorings with his presence far behind. Now I think I've found the secret, found from any trouble way. Mike, if you meet God in the morning, you can have him all the day. Little boy said, Mama, Mama, I prayed last night. Mama said, but baby, you always say your prayers. He said, Mama, I know. But last night, I didn't just say my prayers. I really prayed. Amen. Hello, somebody. Do you know God doesn't hear what comes from your lips? He only hears what comes from our hearts. Sometimes some of y'all that know how to really get them nice sounding prayers out, you mess it up for some of the younger folk because they start thinking they got to learn to say what you say to be able to get through. But no, God doesn't hear what comes from your lips. He only comes what hears comes from your heart. I often say my prayers, but do I really pray? And do the wishes of my heart go with the words I say. I may as well kneel down and worship gods of stone as offer to the living God a prayer of words alone. And being in agony, he prayed more fervently. See, if this man hadn't had this thing happen to his son, he wouldn't have sought the Savior as much as he sought him. Come on, somebody. And Jesus said, if you want this kind of breakthrough, it's coming by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Well, not just prayer. It's got to be a prayer of faith. Come on, somebody. It's got to be like the Bible talks about in Luke 18, 1, he spoke a parable to them that men are always to pray and not to faint. I was studying, and, and, and I said, Lord, you, you got to help me. I don't understand this. I came across Luke chapter 9, verse 18. It says, and he was alone praying. All right, now. And I said, okay, I got that part. But the second part, see, see it wasn't the period. It was a comma. Okay, so he was, and as he was alone praying, and you can check it out, Luke 9 and 18, and as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him. 
Okay, wait, wait, wait. You, 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 you said you was alone praying. And now the disciples are with you. Oh, but it kept on going. And he asked them, saying, whom say the people that I, I said, oh, Lord, you got me mixed up. First you say, you, he's alone praying. And then you say, his disciples are with him. But then you say, he's talking to the disciples and asking, uh, which one was it? He said, all three. <laughs> okay, it's all three. How could that be, all three? He said, I'm glad you asked, because I can tell you. Now, he didn't speak to me verbally, but he dropped it in my spirit. Watch this. Have you ever been in the crowd and felt all alone? Jesus, watch this now, was so aware of the presence and power of his father that although, watch this now, he was in a crowd, he was all alone in the spirit with his father. Amen. He was more aware of the presence of his father than the presence of the people around him. And as a matter of fact, he went a step further. He would talk to the disciples and interchangeably he talked to his father. He talked to the disciples, but he talked to his father. In other words, I learned to do this. I preach for a while, and I pray while I'm preaching. I pray before I preach. I pray after I preach. But the main thing is praying while I preach. And the Holy Ghost showed me this. Real prayer is not when you're praying. Real prayer is how much you pray when you're not praying. Oh, come on, somebody. See, see, you ought to pray all the time, some of the time, but then some of the time, all the time. In other words, there ought to be times when you do nothing but pray, but watch this now, there never ought to be a time when you're not praying. While you're driving up the highway, you ought to be praying. God, don't let that guy drive like a fool. Come on, somebody. I'm saying while you're sitting in church, you ought to be praying. Oh, God, open up my heart. Don't let the word that's preached fall by the wayside. Let my heart be good ground and let it bring forth fruit, my friend. I'm saying, listen, my friend, I'm telling you, it'll change your life. But Jesus was trying to help then, my friend, he said, you got to have prayer yes, and fasting. Hallelujah. Not just regular prayer, real prayer. And then fasting. Because I know it's getting close because y'all looking at me like we're getting hungry. Okay, two minutes, how's that? And so, it's going to take prayer. But it's going to take fasting. And, and, and fasting is not so much a sacrifice as it is letting go of something lesser to grab hold on something higher. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. See, 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 sacrifice, when you think about it properly, it's when you're willing to let go of the visible there so you, you can grab hold of the invisible. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Why? The things which are seen are temporal. They can rust away. The things which are seen are temporal. They can be stolen. But the things that are not seen are eternal. And the problem is, my friend, we are walking too much by our sight. And when you walk by sight, you'll be discouraged, my friend. And that's why the disciples were, why couldn't we heal them? I tell you what, because you've gone based off of what you see. It's like, oh, this is a really bad case. But if you've been looking at the power of God, you're just like, oh, this case ain't nothing for the power of God. Amen. This kind. I don't know about you, my friend. I'm tired of my kind. I'm tired of the kind I've seen. I, I want a this kind. I want a this kind of breakthrough where nobody can say it's a coincidence. Come on now. And by the way, coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. A breakthrough, my friend, exploding through barriers that at one time seemed insurmountable. It's like that little caterpillar, my friend. That caterpillar, ugly and moving slow. But guess what, my friend? And that's the way we are sometimes in our Christian life. But that's the beginning, my friend. That's not the end. Come on now. And God understands something about the caterpillar. And all of a sudden, the caterpillar starts to lose a few legs. He says, God, I don't understand this. I'm moving slow enough as it is. Now you're starting to take some of my legs away. Oh, don't worry. Just wait a little bit. Come on, somebody. And you know the story, right? That, that, that ugly caterpillar that starts losing legs ends up in a what? Cocoon. Oh, wait a minute. A dark place. Cocoon. Lonely place. Cocoon. Seemingly impossible to get out of place. Cocoon. But remember, before you have your undeniable breakthrough, you first going to have an overwhelming breakdown. Come on now. And now here's this little caterpillar, already ugly, already been moving slow, losing legs, and now he's in this dark place. He's in this ugly place. He's in this seemingly impossible get out of place. And if he's human, he'd probably say something like the disciples said, Lord, carest thou not that we perish? Come on. 
I ain't preaching on it now. I got, a, I got a sermon called The Stupidest Question in the Bible. You ask him, love manifest in the flesh, don't you care that we perish? He ain't no genie sent here to do what you want. He's a supreme king. Hallelujah. So the caterpillar's wiggling, trying to get out, trying to get out, trying to get out. Matter of fact, I wrote one of my books, How a Little Boy Saw That Little Struggling Caterpillar. And so he was like a lot of us Christians. I'm going to help him. And I cut out a little hole. And I popped a half caterpillar, half butterfly, wiggled around for a while and it died. And the little boy said, his dad said, Dad, what, what, what happened? I, I was just trying to help the little thing. And his dad said, son, you and I, our ways are different than the ways of God. And he said, listen, you thought you were helping, but see, God in his infinite wisdom, God put that caterpillar into the cocoon, and he knew that the cocoon has to wiggle and has to struggle. And as he struggles, you don't realize the struggle is making him stronger, and the struggle causes the blood that caused the form to, the, the, now, him to form his wings. And the more that he struggles, the the more he's forming, the more he struggles, the more he's being conformed to the image. He's being transformed. And when he finally can bust out, come on, somebody. When he finally can break through, come on, somebody. He'll never crawl on the ground again. Now he gets to fly, my friend. And I come to tell you by the grace of God, your time as a caterpillar has expired. God has your wings ready. Amen.